it is very obvious as we already have, we've increasingly given our life over to software systems. And then it seems obvious, given the capabilities of AI that are coming, that we'll give our lives over increasingly to AI systems. Cars will drive themselves, refrigerator eventually will optimize uh, what I get to eat. And as more and more of our lives are controlled or managed by AI assistants, it is very possible that there's a drift. I mean, I mean, I personally am concerned about non-existential stuff, the more near-term things. Because before we even get to existential, I feel like there could be just so many brave new world type of situations. You mentioned sort of the, the term behavioral drift. It's the slow boiling that I'm really concerned about as we give our lives over to automation, that our minds can become controlled by governments, by companies, or just in a distributed way, there's a drift. S some aspect of our human nature gives ourselves over to the control of AI systems, and they, in an unintended way, just control how we think. Maybe there'll be a herd-like mentality in how we think, which will kill all creativity and exploration of ideas, the diversity of ideas, or, 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 or much worse. So it's true, it's true. but I, a lot of the uh, conversation I'm having you, with you now is also kind of wondering, almost on a technical level, how can AI escape control? Like, what would that system look like? Because it, to me, it's terrifying and fascinating. And also fascinating to me is uh, maybe the optimistic notion that it's possible to engineer systems that defend against that. Uh, one of the things you write a lot about in your book is verifiers. So not humans, humans are also verifiers, but software systems that look at AI systems and like help you understand, this thing is getting real weird, help you help you analyze those systems. So maybe that's a, this is a good time to talk about verification. What is this beautiful notion of verification? My claim is again that there are very strong limits on what we can and cannot verify. Uh, a lot of times when you post something on social media, people go, oh, I need citation to a peer-reviewed article. But what is a peer-reviewed article? You found two people in a world of hundreds of thousands of scientists who said, I would ever publish it, I don't care. That's the verifier of that process. When people say, oh, it's formally verified software, mathematical proof, we accept something close to 100% chance of it being free of all problems. But if you actually look at the uh, research, software is full of bugs. Old mathematical theorems, which have been proven for hundreds of years, have been discovered to contain bugs, on top of which we generate new proofs, and now we have to redo all that. So verifiers are not perfect. Usually they are either a single human or communities of humans, and it's basically kind of like a democratic vote community of mathematicians agrees that this proof is correct, mostly correct. Even today, we're starting to see some mathematical proofs are so complex, so large, that mathematical community is unable to make a decision. It looks interesting, looks promising, but they don't know. They will need years for top scholars to study it to figure it out. So, of course, we can use AI to help us with this process, but AI is a piece of software which needs to be verified. Just to, to clarify, so verification is the process of saying something is correct. Sort of the most formal, a mathematical proof where there's a statement and, and a series of logical statements that prove that statement to be correct, which is a theorem. And you're saying it gets so complex that it's possible for the human verifiers the human beings that verify that the logical step, there's no bugs in it, it, be, it becomes impossible. So it's nice to talk about verification in this most formal, most clear, most rigorous formulation of it, which is mathematical proofs. Right, and for AI, we would like to have that level of confidence for very important mission critical software controlling satellites, nuclear power plants, for small deterministic programs, we can do this, we can check that code verifies its mapping to the design, whatever software engineers intended was correctly implemented. But we don't know how to do this for software which 
keeps learning, self-modifying, rewriting its own code. We don't know how to prove things about the physical world, states of humans in the physical world. So there are papers coming out now, and I have this beautiful one, uh, Towards uh, Guaranteed Safe AI. Mm -hmm. Very cool paper. Some of the best authors uh, I ever seen. I think there is multiple Turing Award winners. There is uh, yeah. quite, you can have this one. One just came out, kind of similar, uh, managing extreme AI risks. So all of them uh, expect this level of proof, but um, I, I would say that uh, we can get more confidence with more resources we put into it. But at the end of the day, we're still as reliable as the verifiers. And you have this infinite regress of verifiers. The software used to verify a program is itself a piece of program. If aliens give us well-aligned superintelligence, we can use that to create our own safe AI. But it's a catch-22. You need to have already proven to be safe system to verify this new system of equal or greater complexity. You just mentioned this paper towards guaranteed safe AI, a framework for ensuring robust and reliable AI systems. Like you mentioned, it's like a who's who. Josh Tenenbaum, Yosha Benjo, Sir Russell, Max Tegmark, and many, many, many other brilliant people. The page you have it open on, there are many possible strategies for creating safety specifications. These strategies can roughly be placed on a spectrum depending on how much safety it would grant if successfully implemented. One way to do this is as follows, and there's a set of levels. From level zero, no safety specification is used, to level seven, the safety specification completely encodes all things that humans might want in all contexts. Where does this paper fall short to you? So when I wrote a paper, Artificial Intelligence Safety Engineering, which kind of coins the term AI safety, that was 2011, we had 2012 conference, 2013 journal paper. One of the things I proposed, let's just do formal verifications on it. Let's do mathematical formal proofs. In the follow-up work, I basically realized it will still not get us 100%. We can get 99.9, .9, we can put more resources exponentially and get closer, but we never get to 100%. If a system makes a billion decisions a second and you use it for 100 years, you're still going to deal with a problem. This is wonderful research. I'm so happy they're doing it. This is great. But it is not going to be a permanent solution to, to that problem. So just to clarify, the task of creating an AI verifier is what? Is creating a verifier that the AI system does exactly as it says it does? Or, or it sticks within the guardrails that it says it must? There are many, many levels. So first, you're verifying the hardware in which it is run. You need to verify, you know, communication channel with the human. You, every aspect of that whole world model needs to be verified. Somehow it needs to map the world into the world model. Uh, map and territory differences. So how do I know internal states of humans? Are you happy or sad? I can't tell. So how do I make proofs about real physical world? Yeah, I can verify that deterministic algorithm follows certain properties. That can be done. Some people argue that maybe just maybe two plus two is not four. I'm not that extreme. But once you have sufficiently large proof over sufficiently complex environment, the probability that it has zero bugs in it is greatly reduced. If you keep deploying this a lot, eventually you're going to have a bug anyways. There's always a bug. There is always a bug. And the fundamental difference is what I mentioned. We're not dealing with cybersecurity. We're not going to get a new credit card, new humanity. So this paper is really interesting. You said 2011, artificial intelligence, safety engineering, why machine ethics is a wrong approach. Uh, the grand challenge you write of AI safety engineering, we propose the problem of developing safety mechanisms for self-improving systems. Self-improving systems. By the way, that's an interesting term for the thing that we're talking about. Is self-improving more general than learning? So self-improving, that's an interesting term. You can improve the rate at which you are learning. You can become more efficient, meta-optimizer. The word self, it's like self-replicating, self-improving. You can imagine a system building its own world on a scale and in a way that is way different than the current systems do. It feels like the current systems are not self-improving or self-replicating or self-growing or self, 
spreading, all that kind of stuff. And once you take that leap, that's when a lot of the challenges seems to happen. Because the kind of bugs you can find now seems more akin to the current sort of normal software debugging kind of process. Uh, but whenever you can do self-replication and arbitrary self-improvement, that's when a bug can become a real problem, real, real fast. Uh, so w what is the difference to you between verification of a non-self-improving system versus a verification of a self-improving system? So if you have fixed code, for example, you can verify that code, static verification at the time. But if it will continue modifying it, you have a much harder time guaranteeing that important properties of that system have not been modified than the code changed. Is it even doable? No. Does the, does the whole process of verification just completely fall apart? It can always cheat. It can store parts of its code outside in the environment. It can have kind of extended mind situations. So this is exactly the type of problems I'm trying to bring up. What are the classes of verifiers that you write about in the book? Is there interesting ones that stand out to you? Do you have your some favorites? So I like uh, Oracle types where you kind of just know that it's right. Turing <laughs> likes Oracle machines. They know the right answer how, who knows, but they pull it out from somewhere, so you have to trust them. And that's a concern I have about humans uh, in a world with very smart machines. We experiment with them. We see after a while, okay, they've always been right before, and we start trusting them without any verification of what they're saying. Oh, I see, that we kind of build Oracle verifiers, or rather we build verifiers we believe to be Oracles, and then we start to, without any proof, use them as if they're Oracle verifiers. We remove ourselves from that process. We are not scientists who understand the world. We are humans who get new data presented to us. Okay, one, one really cool class of verifiers is a self-verifier. Is it possible that you somehow engineer into AI systems the thing that constantly verifies itself? Preserved portion of it can be done, but in terms of mathematical uh, verification, it's kind of useless. You saying you are the greatest guy in the world because you are saying it. It's uh, circular and not very helpful, but it's consistent. We know that within that world, you have verified that system. In a paper, I try to kind of brute force all possible verifiers. It doesn't mean that this one... And, particularly important to us. But what about like self-doubt? Like a, the kind of verification where you said, you say or I say I'm the greatest guy in the world. What about a thing which I actually have is, is a voice that is constantly extremely critical. So like engineer into the system a, a constant uncertainty about self, a constant doubt. Well, any smart system would have doubt about everything, right? You're not sure if what information you are given is true, if you are subject to manipulation. You have this safety and security mindset. But I mean, you have doubt about yourself. So the AI system that has doubt about whether the thing is doing is causing harm, is the right thing to be doing. So just a constant doubt about what it's doing, because it's hard to be a dictator full of doubt. <laughs> I, I may be wrong, but I think Stuart Russell's uh, ideas are all about machines which are uncertain about what humans want and trying to learn better and yes. better what we want. The problem, of course, is we don't know what we want and we don't agree on it. Yeah, but uncertainty. His, his idea is that having that like uh, self-doubt, uncertainty in AI systems, engineered in AI systems, is one way to solve the control problem. It could also backfire. Maybe you're uncertain about completing your mission. Like, I am paranoid about your camera is not recording right now. So I would feel much better if you had a secondary camera. But I also would feel even better if you had a third. And eventually I would turn this whole world into cameras, pointing at us, making sure we're capturing this. No, but wouldn't you have a meta concern, like that you just stated, that eventually there'll be way too many cameras? So you would be able to keep zooming out in the big picture of your concerns. <laughs> so it's a multi-objective optimization. It depends how much I value capturing this versus not destroying the universe. Right, exactly. 
And and then you will also ask about like, what does it mean to destroy the universe and how many universes are, and you keep asking that question, but that doubting yourself would prevent you from destroying the universe because you're constantly full of doubt. It might affect your productivity. <laughs> you just you might be scared to do anything. It's just scared to do anything. Mess things up. Well, that's better. I mean, I guess this, the question is, is it possible to engineer that in? I guess your answer would be yes, but we don't know how to do that, and we need to invest a lot of effort into figuring out how to do that. But it's unlikely. I mean, underpinning a lot of your writing is this sense that we're screwed. But it just feels like it's an engineering problem. I don't understand why we're screwed. It, it, we, time and time again, humanity has gotten itself into trouble and figured out a way to get out of the trouble. We are in a situation where people making more capable systems just need more resources. They don't need to invent anything, in my opinion. Some will disagree, but so far at least I don't see diminishing returns. If you have 10x compute, you will get better performance. The same doesn't apply to safety. If you give uh, MIRI or any other organization 10 times the money, they don't output 10 times the safety. And the gap between capabilities and safety becomes bigger and bigger all the time. So it's hard to be completely optimistic about our results here. I can name 10 excellent breakthrough papers in machine learning. I would struggle to name equally important breakthroughs in safety. A lot of times a safety paper will propose a toy solution and point out 10 new problems discovered as a result. It's like this fractal. You're zooming in and you see more problems and it's infinite in all directions. Does this apply to other technologies or is this, is this unique to AI where safety is always lagging behind? So I guess we can look at related technologies with cybersecurity, right? We, we did manage to have banks and casinos and Bitcoin. So you can have secure, narrow systems, which are doing okay. Uh, narrow attacks on them fail, but you can always go outside outside of a box. So if I can't hack your Bitcoin, I can hack you. So there is always something. If I really want it, I will find a different way. We talk about uh, guardrails for AI. Well, that's a fence. I can dig a tunnel under it. I can jump over it. I can climb it. I can walk around it. You may have a very nice guardrail, but in a real world, it's not a permanent guarantee of safety. And again, this is a fundamental difference. We are not saying we need to be 90% safe to get those trillions of dollars of benefit. We need to be 100% indefinitely, or we might lose the principle.